All right, so here we have a, a top of the cone that kind of uh, develops. And I think there's a couple important things to think about. We have a lot of boats kind of coming in here. And, uh, you know, obviously you need to play the shifts well into the top of the cone. But there's a lot of other decision making that you have to kind of go through. Uh, the second of which is, you know, the shifts that are really important. But also, like, are you coming in with more pressure than other boats? And, and if you are, uh, that can often kind of play into um, what you're going to be able to be able to do at the windward mark here. So as this mark unfolds, a oh, nine is clearly getting around, the, a seven I mean, nine spinning is going to allow three to get around, and we can kind of see how there's this big starboard tack kind of stack up. Um, and boat one is, is overstanding here, and it's going to put potentially put boat eight into a, a pretty tough decision making right they're coming in on a lift uh, a little bit of left angle boat nine is spinning um and i think it, they really need to maybe think about the fact that boat nine's spinning and then they gotta the boat that they really are most worried about right now is boat 11. if boat 11 has good pressure they're not going to be able to cross them but boat 11's kind of going slow nine does a good move and and is taking a duck here, but I actually thought with all the pace that 8 was coming in, they might have been able to uh, maybe lead bow 11 and get inside there, but they take a couple boat duck and it's not the end of the world. Um, fouling at the top of the cone here is obviously really tough and it's a really easy way to kind of put yourself towards the back of the fleet.